If you're building an API in Laravel, it's likely that you are outputting responses to show if something has been successful or not. Now, what if there was a way to standardize these responses so you didn't have to repeat yourself in every single controller that you create? Well, luckily Laravel has a responsible interface, which simply put allows you to convert an object into a response. Now I've already set up a Laravel project here with a very simple topic store controller. I've gone ahead and created the model and migrated this so we can get started on creating some topics directly from a client. And we're gonna start off by looking at how we might previously do this. Then we're gonna convert this over to use a responsible object. Okay, so inside of an endpoint like this that we can just post through to with a title, we wanna go ahead and create out a topic. So let's go ahead and just do this in the most basic way that we would. So we're gonna go ahead and say topic create. And of course, this is very basic. We'll grab from the request just the title, and then we'll just go ahead and return the topic just to get that data back into that endpoint output. So make sure we pull in the namespace for topic. Okay, so now that we've done this, let's go over and just send a request through with a title just in here. Okay, so that's been created. If we just head over to the raw response here, you can see that we get this output here and we could even view this as JSON. So this just gives us the topic that has been created in the database. Okay, so now that we've done that, we probably wanna make this a little bit more friendly for the person consuming the API as well as catching any errors that we get when we create a topic and then returning a response to show that. So the first thing that we'll do is just change up the response here and rather than outputting the object itself, we might wanna go ahead and sort of try and standardize this response. So we're gonna go ahead and use response JSON in here and we're just gonna give a message just to make this a little bit more friendly. So let's say successfully created topic and then we might want to include some data in here as well. And that's going to be the actual topic itself. So we're just kind of wrapping this and just showing something a little bit more useful. Now, what we could also do is we could wrap this in a try and then catch any exceptions that are thrown by catching throwable. And let's just pull this in. And then we might want to do a very similar thing here and then show some sort of error. So of course we don't want to return the data there and we might want to say fail to create topic. Of course, this is a really simple example, but depending on what you're building, the structure of this will be pretty similar. Okay, so let's go back over to our client and create another topic out, and there we go. We've got a much nicer response here. You might want to include other bits of information, but you kind of get the idea. Now, what happens if the topic fails? Well, we should see this response here. What we're going to do is head over to the topic model and just simulate this by going ahead and creating a booted method. And we're gonna say that when this is being created, and if we just get this round in the right order, first of all, that would help. So when this is being created, all I'm gonna do is throw an exception with something went wrong. And that should do it. So if we come over here and send this across now, we get that output failed to create topic. So we're just gonna use this here to simulate something going wrong while a topic is being created. Okay, so this is all well and good, but if we create another endpoint, we're gonna to have to pretty much replicate the entire structure of this. What happens if message needs to change to something else or you need to add some more data here? Well, you're gonna to have to go through every single controller that you have and modify this to standardize each of the responses that you're just outputting here. And that's what this video is about. We're gonna look at how we can make this into a standard object where we just pass data through to the constructor and output it in a very, very structured way. So let's start with a successful response and turn this into an object that implements the responsible interface in Laravel. Now I'm gonna go over to the topic and just get rid of this so we can actually see the successful message and we're gonna get this and refactor it. So let's get rid of that and start to create an object which represents a successful API response. So I'm gonna put this under HTTP, that makes a lot more sense and I'm gonna create a folder called responses and of course you can put these anywhere you want. So I'm gonna create an API success response class inside of here. 
So let's go ahead and add the namespace to this. That's now under HTTP and responses. And we're just going to create out a standard class called API success response. That is the first step. Okay, so now that we've done this, we're then going to go ahead and implement the responsible interface. Now let's just take a look at this. We just need to implement a to response method. All this is going to do is when we return this object or this class, it's going to convert it into a response for us and it's going to use what we return from to response. And we also get the request injected in as well, which is really handy. So let's go ahead and create out that to response method in here to response and that gives us the request in here. Great. So let's just test this out. I'm just going to go ahead and return in here response and JSON and we're just going to say success true just to test this out before we add some more data. Okay, so how do we use this API success response class now over in this controller? Well, we just new it up and return it. It's as simple as that. So return new API success response and that is all we need to do. So let's go over to our client here, hit enter, and there we go. We've returned that object, but of course what's happened is Laravel has called to response, getting the request in if we need it, and it's done everything that we need to in here. The benefit of this now is that we can go ahead and start to pass some data through to here that we want to construct in that standardized response. So if we go over to the API success response here, create a constructor out, what are some of the things that we would want to see in here? And let's just pull this up because we don't need anything in there. So we would probably want the data, so the thing that we want to represent, like a topic. So let's go ahead and call that data. And we would probably want some sort of metadata as well, so a success message, something like that. So let's go ahead and create out a protected array of metadata. That's just additional data about this. We'll leave it at that for now and then we'll add in a few other bits in a moment. Okay, so the data is going to be output here and then the metadata is going to be output here. And that's pretty much all we need to do for now. So we can just go ahead and pass this in now. So we want to pass the topic in as the main data and then maybe we'll want to pass in a message just for the consumer of this API. So topic created successfully. Let's check out the difference now. So let's go over, send this request across, and there we go. We have a standard API response with the data and the metadata. That means that inside of any other controller that we create, we can now just return this object, and that's going to give us the same response every single time. If we need to update anything in here, we can just go ahead and do that in one place, and that's going to be reflected everywhere. So what are some other things that we could add to this that would be beneficial that we would then take advantage of of not having to update this every single place in our app? Well, we could even include a response code in here as well because we're using response JSON. We can pass the response code into the second argument of this. So we could accept this in but also include a, a sensible default. So let's go ahead and create out the code that we want to use here. That's going to be an integer. And by default, we could set that to a 201, for example, or just a 200. So let's go ahead and say response. And we're going to pull that in from Illuminate HTTP. And these have things like HTTP accepted, HTTP OK, which kind of makes sense for this example. What we could also do is start to accept in some headers because we might want to send headers through to here. And that's of course going to be an array of headers. By default, we'll leave that just as an empty array. So now what we can do is we can replace this out with the code, which by default is 200. And we could also optionally accept in some headers. Remember we've set a default of an empty array there. So we don't need to include that and we don't need to include the code. So now if we go over, we have our API success response, which is going to work in exactly the same way. But we could also add, say, a 201 to signify that this has been created. That's going to change the status in our client here. And you can see that we get that changed as well. So we don't need to do that every single time we do a response JSON because everything is included in here by default. So we now have a nice class or an object, because obviously we're newing it up here, which 
gives us the ability to pass all of this information in, standardize the response and return it to the client much easier. Now, the slightly more difficult one is the API error response. So we're gonna go ahead and create that out in here. I'm just gonna copy and paste all of this just to save some time. So API error response, and let's paste this in. Let's get rid of all of this, and let's get rid of all of these as well. Okay, so of course we're gonna change the name over here to API error response, and we should be good to go. So over in our controller now, rather than return this within here, we can do the same thing. We can return a new API error response. And what are some of the things that we might want to pass into here? Well, it would make sense to pass the actual exception in so we can start to extract some information out of this and of course, go ahead and give that to the user. Then what we could do is include some metadata. So we could either do that as an array or we could do that as a single string and just output an error. Really depends on what you wanna do. So I'm gonna say fail to create topic here. And then we could go ahead and also pass in a status code in here as well. And that of course depends on what went wrong. You could extract that from the exception or you could just leave it out and have a general error. So over in API error response, let's first of all accept in the throwable thing, exception. And then let's go ahead and accept in the message as well. And we'll cast that here or type in that to a string. So let's go ahead and pull in throwable and let's see what we can do with this inside of here. So let's go ahead and return again a response and use response JSON. And really all we want in here, at least for public use, so anyone that's consuming our API, is just gonna be the message. We don't want to reveal any information in here about the exception really to people consuming our API. So let's try this out and then we'll see how we can take the exception data and show this only when we're in a local environment or an environment only with debugging enabled. Okay, so I'm gonna go over to the topic and bring this back and let's go over and send this through. Great, we've got another standardized response here using that responsible class just inside of here. Okay, so what happens about this exception information then? If we're on a local environment, we'll probably want to include some more information about this. So what we could do is we could pull up the response here, set the message in here, and then add additional data to this if we're in an appropriate environment. So let's go ahead and just get rid of this, change this over for the response, and then in here, check if we're in a local environment, and then add the details to this. So what we're gonna do is we are going to check first of all if we actually have an exception. So did we call that E or exception? We called it E. So if we have that exception and if we're in a debug environment, so we could probably go ahead and hit app and debug. And that comes from this value just here, app debug over in config and app. We have debug, which pulls from our EMV. Okay, so if that's the case, what we can then do is add to our response. So we could set a debug value in here and we could set that key to an array with a little bit more information. So we could include the full exception message in here. So this E and get message. We could include the file, for example. So we're just gonna go ahead and say get file. We could include the line, which might be helpful for a developer, so get line. And we could include the trace stack as well if we really wanted to. So get trace as string, so we don't actually output a huge amount of data. Okay, so let's try this out. We're currently in debug mode, so what we should see here is the debug information, the message, the actual message of the exception that was thrown, the file, the line, and all of the trace inside of here. I don't actually think that's too useful at the moment, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that just so we're not outputting too much information. There we go. So that gives us a little bit more information, but if we're in an environment where debug is set to false, then of course we're just gonna see the standard message just in here. And of course this is very simple. You could add more information here if you wanted to. You could pass more data down to here if you wanted to. For example, this could be an array like the metadata that we saw over in the success response is really up to you. 
The whole point now is that wherever we need to return a response, we have a standard way to do it. We just new this class up, pass the exception in, and pass in the data we need. Same with the API success response as well. To finish up, let's just make sure that our API error response also allows us to include in a response code. By default, let's go ahead and grab the response and just uh, an internal error maybe, so an internal server error. And of course, we also might want to include some headers in this as well, exactly like we did in the success response. So it's exactly the same deal. We just wanna go ahead and pass in the code here and also the headers. So everything is nice and standard across both the API error response and the success response.